Hey, this is Eric with AnimationTrainer.com. For those of you who are having a hard time with audio, I just wanted to put together this quick lesson. If you don't know, you can download a program for free called Audacity, and I'll put the link below this video. Um, go ahead. It, it's a safe program. It's easy to use. It can give you a lot of different special effects and voices and stuff. And what I wanted to do today is just create a kid's voice to show you for the first cartoon character that I'm going to give you here. Um, so I've opened up Audacity. I'm just going to click record. Hey, this is a test voice for a kid. That's All right, now the next step is to turn it into a kid's voice. Obviously, I don't sound like a kid. So what you're going to do is just left click, highlight the section that you recorded, come up to effect, and change pitch. We don't want to change the speed or anything. But generally if you raise it just about, uh, well, we'll go 8% and see how that sounds. Click OK. Hey, this is a test voice. Okay, Control Z will undo what we just did. And because uh, that wasn't enough, we'll change the pitch again. And this time we'll take it up to 25%. Okay, and that sounds pretty good for a kid's voice. So now what we want to do is just file, export selection as WAV or export it as MP3. It doesn't matter. Okay, I've imported the voice. Here it is down here. And in our timeline, you can see changes in the amplification of the sound. And you can scrub through that real quick just by grabbing this little red line and moving it back and forth. You'll notice right now we don't have any keyframe set. We're going to do that right now. Okay, if you're on animationtrainer.com, go ahead and download this character. The link is right below this video. So go ahead and download it. If you want to, you can open up the character in Anime Studio and minimize the screen, or not minimize it, but shrink it down, and then you can watch this video alongside of it and just follow along with me but import the, the uh, test kids voice and come up here to the front view come down to the mouth and double click the mouth switch layer folder now you're going to go over to the switch tab and where it says select audio sync source go ahead and select the kids voice mp3 and click OK and you can see where we just set our keyframes now the problem is, you'll notice that um, our different phonemes for our mouth don't really line up with the changes in the audio file. There isn't really a phenomenal lip syncing program out there. Um, you have Papagayo, which is free, uh, and it does a good job. And I think Magpie is free, I'm not sure. The one thing you can do with Papagayo, I know, is create a a .dat file and that will allow you to actually go through and set each and every phonem but if you look at the mouth layer in here you're gonna notice that some of these that I created aren't the same as your typical phonemes and there's a reason for that I'm gonna show you how to cheat and, and just uh, lip sync real fast before I get really ahead of myself let me explain what a phonem is it's a mouth shape that corresponds to a sound. So the wa qua, you'll notice that, um, like if you were de deaf and you were watching somebody's mouth, uh, it would make the same shape to form those two different sounds. But then you have like the L sound, the E, the O, the U. Um, and what's different about this character is, you'll see I have one down here that doesn't fit with your traditional phonemes, and it's all L's. That's your real L mouth shape. And then the one above it, the L, is the one that the lip sync program will set itself to. The problem with most of these lip sync programs is the L shape is dominant. So when you do the auto lip sync, you'll end up with a lot more L's than actually exist in your sound file. So I'll click this and, and show you real quick what I made the L Okay, here's what the L looks like. Because you're going to end up with so many of these, um, as I zoom in, you can see the tongue doesn't really show too much. 
it's more of an open mouth shape, which will give you a lot of general sounds. The all L shape has the dominant tongue. That's for your actual L. And I'll show you what I mean in just a second here. Okay, I'm going to click on the mouth folder. If you come over here to your layers area, you can click this one, and that is your switch layer folder. And up here, you can just go through and switch your switch layers real quick. But when I scrub through this, if I wanted to use an actual L, I would put it on the keyframe where I need the L, and then come up here and click the LLLLL folder, and that way I can set the right frame. Okay, a huge benefit of this character is I added an extra etc shape. What we're going to do is come down here to the timeline. I'm just going to delete a bunch of these. All right, now if I were animating this character, lip syncing him to the sound, what I would do is use a lot of these etc. If you switch back and forth between etc and etc too, you can actually give the appearance that he's doing a lot more talking than he is. Um, you'll notice it if you watch some of the popular cartoons that are out today, you can watch the characters and they'll do the same thing with, with their characters. Hey, this is a test voice for a kid.